Greetings, my friends. Pastor Jeff Haygood here. Welcome to Living Better. You know, God wants, God desires, God has designed, God has a plan for your life, and God's plan for your life is a plan that makes living better, 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 better. Jesus told us that the thief only comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but that he's, cut, he's come that we might have life and that we might have life more abundantly. This, today, I want to talk to you from Romans chapter number 12, where the Bible simply says this. Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you might present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. That is your reasonable service. It goes on to say, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. You know what God wants from you, what God needs from you, what this world needs from you, what your family needs from you, what your church needs from you? Your church, your family, this world needs a serve illusion, a revolution of service or a revolution by service. I've certainly said on many occasions that many times uh, what we have uh, termed a revolution was no different than a rotation. And a rotation is just you turning around, but a revolution is when you turn things around. And I believe that God wants to turn things around in your world and in, the, in our world. He wants to turn things around. And for things to turn around, you and I have got to serve our way, We've got to serve our generation. The Bible said in the book of Acts that David served this generation by the will of God. And I believe everybody God places in your life, he's placed in your life for you to serve them. I have a wife. I serve my wife. She's often taught people that if a wife outserves her husband, he must yield to her authority. I am the leader in my house, which means I must be the chief servant. I want to serve my generation, serve my family, serve my church, serve my posterior, which means the generations to come. A couple of things I want to leave with you today uh, about serving in a revolutionary form, a revolutionary fashion. And first, I'll begin with this. Some of us just take too many things for granted, and it's easy for us to become slothful in our service to the Lord or in the Lord's house. Many of us come to church to sit and not to serve, or we sit and rest on our laurels rather than serving our generation. A couple of things I want to leave you with today, and I think they're very simple. There is a transformation, a process that takes place in our lives as God takes us to level after level in this process of serving our generation or revolution our world through service. Number one, it's slavery. We all start out as slaves. I know you don't like it in our culture and certainly in our nation. We don't like to hear that we're all slaves, but the Bible tells us whoever we yield our members to obey, we are their slaves. And so we start out as slaves. A slave, amen, is, is doing what he's doing because he is compelled to do it by the one who owns him. But we can move from slavehood because who the sun sets free is indeed free. We move from slavehood to servanthood. A servanthood is a servant has relationship with the owner. And so uh, when we become a, a servant of the Lord, it's because we have a relationship with the Lord, we become a servant of the owner. Those who work in your church or even in your business, when you have a relationship with them, you get better service out of them. When the owner and the servant have a relationship, it leads us to the next level, which is stewardship. The Bible says it's required of a steward that a man would be found faithful. A steward has responsibility for everything, even though he doesn't actually own anything. The fourth level, after you go through slavery and servanthood and you move to stewardship and you're functioning with some responsibility, then you move to sonship. A sonship is an ownership position. And so when you take ownership of your acts, your actions, uh, your results, your behaviors, your words, your deeds, uh, your, your visions, you take ownership of your appetites, your desires, that's when God has you positioned to turn this world upside down and ultimately you don't just live a good life. 
You absolutely, positively, unequivocally, categorically, undisputedly, undeniably come to a place where you're living better, living your dream. It's only one way to get there. You can't worship your way there. You can't praise your way there. I don't want to alarm you, but you can't even pray your way there because when prayer comes to an end, that's when serving God and serving your generation will begin. It's time for us to take our place and show this world that we are sons of God. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you is my prayer. It's time for you and I to live better. It's gonna get better in your life better.